their father said unto them, What way he what way went he? For his son had seen what way of the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass, so that they saddled him the donkey and rode thereon. And went after the man of God and found him sitting under a oak, and said unto him, Art thou the man of God that cometh from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this So he place. repeated what God told him, what he's supposed to be obedient to. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou comest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the way of the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto him, the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus said the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came it back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. So he just read in his death sentence. And this is how easy it is to fall into disobedience because of title. You know, when we left where we were coming from, we went to church and uh, we joined this church. And you know, you can't come in there with any title. Nobody, when you come in there, you have no title. As a matter of fact, you got to be baptized all over again. And, and all these different things that they have set up, which I totally understand. Yes. Because some places, people, they, they, they thrive off of these titles. And man, don't get a prophecy when you disappear because you believe like you're that apostle. For me, you forgot about the whole process. You just want to, I'm an apostle. And you're walking around with your head high, thinking that you were the apostle, chief apostle of all apostles. And, and you're missing the process that you were supposed to go through, the steps that you were supposed to receive and learn from the Holy Spirit before you even get to that title. You know, I know people throw titles out there all the time. You know, and it's so easy to grab it. You know, who don't want to be known as pastor so-and-so? Man, when you find yourself wanting or desiring a position just so you can have power, you're going to hear God. You're going to be obedient to God. You're going to go deliver what God sent you to deliver. But you ain't going to have enough substance to keep you obedient. Because you'll be easily tricked by a title. Yes. The reason why he believed the man because he was an old prophet. Yes. But as people of God, we need to learn to hear from God. Yes. Even when it don't seem right, even when it don't sound like right, God is just food. Don't let it look like it's just food. Yes. The prophet hungry. And he's going to another prophet house, God. This is your people, one kingdom. Amen? But then God allowed that same old prophet. Yes. Because that's God people. God spoke to that same old prophet to read him his death sentence. Obedience to God. Obedience. Submission. Yes. Why are we obedient? Who are we obedient to? Why are we submissive? Who are we submissive to? Yes. It's so easy to fake that I'm obedient. Yes. It's so easy to fake that I'm submissive. Mm -hmm. You know, I went and we were, somebody was having a party. And man, I went there to clean and help the person clean. But the person was introducing me, come meet my pastor, everybody come meet. I'm like, man, I'm not even dressed. I'm 
we had to clean. And but this person was come meet this is my pastor, this is my pastor. I'm like, wow. It showed me something about that person. She knew my heart. And she's she's happy to say that I'm her leader. Because she knows what she's receiving. But I have some people, they wouldn't even acknowledge you as their leader. Because they think leaders should have a certain look, a certain yeah. persona, you know? They need to come with the, the strings and the little, yeah. with the staff talking about Ravi. I really want us to look at this. Because God put that story there for us to learn something. Yeah. When we submissive to God, we'll be able to hear his voice and know his voice. That we won't even be tricked by the very people we're supposed to be serving in the same kingdom with. Because some people in the same kingdom means you know well. They're happy when you're less than. Yes, yes. Come on. Talk about it. That's it right there. Can I share a secret with you? People will rather hear that me and my wife left the ministry where we're coming from and be out here backsliding, yeah. turning up in some club. They will rather hear that about us than hear that we're actually doing God's work. You know what people are me, and instead of them being happy for us, they're like, "You sure God called you? You stay there. You keep. You keep that. You keep. You stay right there where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Moving right along. Moving right along. Yeah. You see, this is a hard thing, and we missed it. This heart is so. The, the Bible said the heart is desperately wicked. Who knows it? I mean, I don't even know my own heart. I gotta bring my heart to God, like God. I don't know if tomorrow this might be me. So I bring my heart to you right now, God. And please help me not make that mistake. I don't walk around here thinking I got God figured out and like if God is my genie and I got him in my pocket and I know what God is thinking about all 24-7. I don't know. But I do know his grace. I do know how sufficient it is because it saved a wretch like me. So because it saved a wretch like me, I want to be able to pass it on. I want to be able to pass on that baton of discipleship. I want to be able to let somebody know, hey, you can live. Yes. And not die. Yes. A lot of us are walking dead. Yes. A lot of us are walking around here, pretending we submissive. Yes. Looking like we submissive, but our heart is defective. Yes. You know why? Another sign. We can... Go out there and pretend. But we can't pretend when it comes to face-to-face -face reality with God. Amen. You see, a lot of us, we take this picture on Facebook and we think that we are on vacation mode. But the reality is, your heart is in dying mode. Your heart is crying out like, man, we on our way to hell. You gotta recognize that I am dirty. You gotta recognize that, hey, God need you to clean this, these chambers up. Get the heart right. Amen. Once we get the heart right, man, we can walk into destiny, purpose, everything will be fulfilled and not half. Yes. We keep giving God half and what's yes. left. Yes. We get to work on time. Yes. Do we ever get to church on time? When it comes to the things of God, do we give God our best? Or because it's God, we give Him what's left? Because it's God, we know His grace is sufficient, His mercy. All these great songs we sing, we start believing in and live by that code. When that code is so far from the truth. We just saw we're a prophet of God. By disobeying God, you mean that there's death? You mean that the wages of sin is actual death? He got a physical death, but then what about the spiritual death? No conviction. You leave church, you can turn up the radio on, on 99 Jams and listen to all these. You can just, it's so easy, no conviction. As soon as you leave church, you can just go get in your car and you can just start doing all manner of evil. Looking at that porn, you know what you're doing. But no conviction. Like he wasn't just saying hallelujah. How can bitter water and sweet water flow from the same stream? There's a separation that needs to happen, but until I recognize that, hey, I need to yes. separate myself from this, yes. there 
there will be no separation. I'll be walking around lukewarm. I'll be walking around bewitched. Like he said, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Foolish Kyle, who have bewitched you? How far do you think he can get trying to trick God? It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. Until we realize that this is a hard condition, because I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I've been living this life for so long. I love how sin feel. I love how the sex feel. I love how smoking the weed feel. I love how smoking the cigarette feel. I just love how going to the club feel. I love that moment. It's like a quick fix. I love how it feel. But now that I come into Christ, it's a whole different new authority I got to be submissive to. And we learn what submissive is. A new authority, a new way of doing something different. So now I gotta start training myself to do something different, live different. Amen. It's gonna take practice. Yes, practice. But once we continue to practice, it becomes a part of us. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Follow me. No, Paul said, Follow me as I follow Christ. Now, why would he say that? Follow me as I follow Christ. You know, let's go to Mark 1. Mark 1. Let's see what. Mark 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee. Jump down to sorry. Jump down to 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and talked. And they were astound, astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou son of Nazareth, thou, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. <coughs> The message version said, everyone there was insidiously buzzing with curiosity. What's going on here? A new teaching that does what it says? What's going on here? A new teaching that does what it says? He shuts up defiling demonic spirits and send them packing. News of this traveled fast and was soon all over Galilee. See, Jesus is the Word. And when the Word goes forth, it must do what it says. So now we got to ask ourselves why is it that I'm stuck? Is it because I'm not believing the Word? Is it that my faith to overcome this sin? Is not enough. This is what the word said. A teaching that does what it says. So that means Jesus was teaching this. And it was actually happening. People of God. We need to believe God. If I know I'm struggling with something. I need to seek the word. And what the word says about how can I overcome this thing. Well, how are we going to get the answer if we don't seek? If we're not excited to go in there and, and, and become revealed and let God
God, look, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I'm dirty. Here I am. Clean me up, Jesus. I don't know why, as soon as I leave the presence of the believers, it's like this, this evil side of me just want to kick in like a bipolar. It's a sin problem. I just love doing it. So now I gotta tell myself, how do I get out of this? Sometimes we feel like we're in too deep, but Jesus is like, no. You just gotta say no and just come back to me. I'm knocking. I'm knocking. You're the one who's not answering. You see, Jesus don't force himself on us. He's gentle. He's a gentleman. But just, I gotta recognize the steps that I need to take to bring forth a change in my life. I can't keep hearing truth and then not trying to practice it and live it. Amen. It's too much truth happening in this ministry for us not to become livers and doers of the word. Amen. If we are not livers and doers of the word, I need to question myself, where am I lacking? Why am I not displaying spiritual integrity? The prophet thought he was by himself or something. I don't know if he thought Jesus went on vacation, decided to go follow the older prophet because he made prophet and ended up catching his death. He didn't get an opportunity to repent. He did God work well. Could you imagine? And then God just allowed his body to lay there. The lion didn't even eat him because he was so contaminated. He couldn't even get a good burial. His parents just heard that he was dead. Went to do God work. Could you imagine the celebration? Oh, he was doing God work. He died on the mission field. Didn't even know he died in disobedience. We got to be careful, people of God. Who am I submissive to? Many of us, we know when our back is against the wall, God is speaking because we have that conviction. We know he's, this is wrong. But the thing is, we got to expose the enemy because that's the true enemy. Amen. When I know my desires is, is a lot, it's a little bit too much. I got to hold up. What is this? Where is this coming from? This is why not a lot of change we have in conversion, people saying the little holy remedy, oh, believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth. Yeah, we have a lot of people doing that. We could count probably a thousand people who did that. But the challenge is, can you live it? You know, when we first started Shadow's House, you know, people give their first seed. And God told us to give the money to Sean. I'm like, Brother Sean, I don't even know where this kid lives. What do you mean give him the money? I, I can't trust him. But God had to talk to me. This is not about you, brother man. This is about him. And I had to tell Sean, look, I'm sorry, because this is how I felt. I didn't know you. I, I don't even know where you live. But how can God allow me to just say, hey, look, take all these people money? You could probably run off. My mind started going off, and I had to confess it to him. <laughs> yeah, I had to confess it to him so, so I can be right. Amen. This is bigger than me and you. I'm trying to be right with God. I don't want, when I look at you, I'm being a hypocrite. I don't want to fake a smile. That's just not in my DNA. I don't want to be fake. It's a hard problem, but we got to get to it. We got to get to the root of it. But it's only you can get there. I'm not coming in there. I did enough deep sea diving for me. Now it's your turn to step up. Grow up. It's time for us to grow up. As a ministry, it's time for us to grow up as a, as a culture that, that embraced the change, the transformation that Christ had for us. We got to all look like Jesus. He didn't just say, you look like Jesus. No, it's an opportunity for all of us to look like Jesus. But what's on the inside is going to flow up. We can tell from how people speak. We can tell from how we treat each other. Some of us won't even treat somebody else because... They, they don't have a prophet or title to their name. They, they would treat them like they, they're less than. Nah, we got to esteem each other higher. We got to learn to esteem each other higher. We got to learn to esteem each other higher. 
I can learn from you. I don't ever try to put myself in a place where I can't learn from you. But when I learn, I gotta make sure I never put myself back in that situation where I gotta keep learning from you. I gotta go now. I gotta elevate. My enemy now become my footstool. So the enemy that I was struggling and stuck now became my footstool so I can go higher. Submission. I have to know. Once I know that I'm submitted to truth, I know God got me. If Jesus treated all the disciples the same, that even on the day he was going to be betrayed, nobody looked to Judas and said it was you. That means he treated everyone equally. This is why I was able to trust Sean with the people money. This is why I'm able to trust some of you guys. All of you guys are like this on my back. Because it's not about us. It's bigger than this. I want your heart to catch up with your truth. The same way I need my heart to catch up with my truth. If I start confessing, I believe God, now I, my heart got to catch up to that. Amen. This is a message for us to all check our own heart. Amen. There's no more time for faking it. There's no more time for pretending. If we truly family, if we truly are part of the same kingdom, it's time for us to truly, genuinely love each other and help each other. When I see my brother fall, fall I must be able to be strong enough to pray my brother up and pick my brother up. It's not time for me to say, oh, he's less than and think that I'm better than. Yes. A lot of us are looking for this, this called Duff. A lot of y'all kids know that movie with Duff. Yeah. It's the one in the crew who knows she's better than her own crew, so she stands out. A lot of us do that as, as believers. We want to see our people, our brothers and sisters keep struggling. Because then I stand out as a master prophet. Then I stand out as a greater, the greater than I am that I am here in God. But it's a heart condition. God is trying to get into our heart and he's trying to dissect and clean up this heart. God want to restore us, but it's just us, our heart, our heart condition. I got to love God more than I love sin. I got to love God more than I love anything else. I got to give God my best. Hallelujah. Anytime you find yourself can't even put your hands up entirely or your hallelujah becomes like, yes, hallelujah. It's a hard thing. You got to check you. Sin is in the camp somehow. And you got to be honest with you because the Bible said the son said free is free indeed. So I hold nothing back from God. And he's not a condemning God. He doesn't condemn us. When we truly free, you can tell when somebody's truly free. Because they know that the hallelujah is an offering to God. They know that their prayers is an offering to God. So I want us all to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. We're not presenting our bodies to each other. We present in our body to God. Amen. It's a call for us to repent. Yes. It's a call for us to get back to His will. Be submissive to Him first. Be submissive to God first. And watch everything else line up in place. You see, a lot of us, we, when we see our sister or our brother fall, we love to join in with the team and talk. And then we touch in the green with the wrong prayers. Yes. Yes. When we talk about, you know, I don't want to use Brother Sean, I want to use somebody. Somebody. Use somebody. I can't use this as Is there anybody I can use? Mr. Jessica. <laughs> no. But I'll use myself. You get the point, right? Yes. We all got to grow. Amen. And we got to help each other grow. Yes. Yes. I 
want you to do better. I want you to become better. I don't want you to be stuck. Because when you grow, I grow. When I grow, you grow. God wants us to grow. Grow together. So, for those of you who know that God is calling you to grow, I speak to you right now. And I, and I speak to your spirit man right now. And I, and I, and I tell you to come, come forward. And, and, and I'm speaking to your spirit man because everything we do, it must be done in spirit and in truth. Because yeah. God is looking for some worshipers who can worship him in spirit and in truth. So, so I want to speak to your spirit man because your spirit man is what's going to guide you into all truth. Because he can communicate with the Holy Spirit and he can do it well. It's not about the words that were spoken over your life. It's not about where you think in your mind, where you, where you belong, where you think. No, God is about stretching you. He wants you to, when we die here, we must go before him empty. We must fulfill everything that he called us to fulfill. I never saw a teaching like this that actually do what it says it's going to do. Never saw it done like this before because the words were not, and the word is life, is power. You know, Jesus couldn't do a lot of miracle signs and wonders in his own hometown because the people became very common, they became familiar, they know he was the carpenter's son, and he's just a carpenter, and they put him in this little box when he he is life. So it had to be people who didn't even know it to receive divine healing instantly. Divine resurrecting power instantly because it was not familiar with it. If you find yourself Sunday after Sunday getting truth coming at you and you just sit there and you just like, I know this is true, but I'm not ready yet. Become too familiar. Everywhere you go, God is sending people to remind you of the word that you receive here and you're just so familiar. But God is saying, no, I need that transformation to happen. You got to start living it now. See, God is waiting on you. And you telling yourself, you waiting on God. God is waiting on you. And you telling yourself, you waiting on God. Do you understand what God is doing? Yeah. Not even two years, and God already gave us the keys to the building. My God. When we came here, we told the pastor, look, as we grow, you grow. This is not competition. We can grow together. Amen. Our heart is different. But you got to know. You got to be ready to grow. Yeah. Let's stand to our feet.